Hello, my name is Tom Lienhoven. I am Director of Marketing for Cafusion Healthcare. The most sensitive part of the lung is the alveolar wall. And the alveolar wall is very important in the whole lung protection system. I'm going to show you with a very simple model what the alveolar wall does under certain circumstances. The parameter we're looking at is transpulmonary pressure or transmural pressure, in fact the pressure over the alveolar wall. Consider this as a part of the alveolus and the little blocks are the alveolar cells. And as you know the cells are connected with connective tissue. If I press on this alveolar wall generating a peep, you will see the alveolus distend and the cells move back. I'll do that in this way. I press with my thumb and you clearly see that the wall is very distensible. That means that if I generate enough peep in this lung, the alveolus will be overstretched and might get injured. Now, the lung itself is within the thorax and the thorax prevents the lung from being overdistended. Obese patients have a lot of fat, body fat, and uh, the intestines are pushing the lung back. So the chest wall of a obese patient is extremely low compliant. I'm placing a elastic band behind the alveolus. If I'm pressing again, you see that now the alveoli do not distend that easily. The chest wall prevents the lung from distending. There is no way that airway pressure is going to tell you that because airway pressure does not tell you the transmural pressure or the pressure over the alveolar wall. The only way to do that is to measure pleural pressure and airway pressure. Now it's very difficult in humans to measure pleural pressure but esophageal pressure is an extremely good surrogate for that. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to show you the simulator with an extra pressure measurement. There is a pressure transducer on the front and there's also a pressure transducer on the back of the alveolus. And in be so in between the alveolar wall and the chest wall, there is a transducer. And I'm going to show you what that means. On the screen now, you see three pressures. Pressure of the airway, pressure of the esophagus and Airway pressure minus esophagus pressure is transmural or transpulmonary pressure. I'm going to do the same exercise. I'm taking off the chest wall and I'm going to press on the balloon. And again, I'm trying to reach 20 centimeters of pressure. You see that the lung is very distensible, but if you now look at the screen, you see that the airway pressure is very high the esophageal pressure is very minimal, so the transmural pressure is very high. And that is an indication of lung injury. Now, now I'm going to place back the chest wall on the machine. And I'm going to do the same exercise and we're going to observe, observe the values again. I'm pressing on the transducer. You see the pressure in the airway going up, but you also see that the pressure in the esophagus goes up. So if I now subtract esophageal pressure from airway pressure, I get a much lower transmural pressure. And a low transmural pressure, a low distending pressure, means that the alveoli is better protected. So transpulmonary pressure is a very important parameter for lung protective ventilation. Now the question is, how would you do that in the human being? Well, it's not that difficult. Now this feeding tube, has a balloon on it. By placing the feeding tube, the balloon is already in the esophagus. And then the only thing you have to do is tell the machine to start measuring the pressure. Very simple, the balloon is in place and you say to the machine, start. I can place the balloon inside the patient and then by pressing this contact, the machine will now inflate the balloon a little bit and you have a pressure in the esophagus. I will squeeze the balloon a little bit and I'll show you what that means. You see, pressing the balloon generates an esophageal pressure and then pleural pressure is airway pressure minus esophagus pressure. So what you see here is a very simple way, a very simple way 
to measure transpulmonary pressure, that is really clinically very acceptable to do and I think the nursing teams will have no problem working with this technology. And then, once you understand what the parameters mean, you're going to see, I think, an effect on, on outcome because finally the lung is protected. The interesting thing at this Congress here, there is a lot of resonance and a lot of discussion on lung protective ventilation. Thanks for your attention.